Hello and welcome to Mel Makes. Today we're going to be painting Serena Beach from Super Mario Sunshine. This is the full version. If you're interested in the time lapse, you can click on the card here. Otherwise, let's get started. So we've been playing through Super Mario Galaxy over on Steven Plays, and it's really pretty and it's really fun, and we've been playing the Switch version with the 3D All-Stars, and it made me think about Super Mario Sunshine, and I decided I wanted to paint Serena Beach from it. And I started sketching, and I wanted to put in this wave because otherwise the shoreline is pretty flat, and I thought it would be cool to incorporate what you can see of Pina Park in the background. So what I want to do is make this more of an ocean sunset, incorporate the wave, lots of colors and details in the wave here, and then have the silhouette of the park in the background pretty far back. So what I need to do first is paint that sky. And I want to draw in about where the sun's going to go and about where the horizon is going to go first before I start to paint in the gradient here in that far background. I used an orange chalk pastel to draw everything in, and I picked orange because most of the painting is going to be orange, but it sometimes interferes with the colors. So if I had put a lot of orange here, when I put the yellow down, it may pick up some of that orange and make my yellow a bit warmer than the cool yellow that I'm going to be painting here around the sun area. So after I drew in things for the sky, I took an eraser and lightly erased over those areas so that I can still see the lines a little bit so I have an idea of where it goes, but it's not going to pick up onto my paintbrush and change the color of my paint. It wouldn't be a ton of color difference unless I was painting here where it's very dark, but sometimes I do notice it, so I just erased that lightly so I don't have to worry about it at all. Next, I'm gonna be taking a paintbrush probably this one because it's a good size for it, and starting with my yellow here, filling in where the sun is going to go, working my way into orange, red, violet, into a light blue, and then a darkest blue at the very, very outsides of the sky. The gradient needs to be totally dry before I use the chalk pastel to draw the clouds. It makes it a lot easier to erase and I don't accidentally make indents in the paint that's still there if it's dry. And I can use my finger a little bit to erase some of it, but it really, really helps if I use a damp towel to erase any chalk that I have to. But I'm going to leave all of this in place until the clouds are all the way done and then I can erase anything that shows after that all in one swoop. I also cut out a circle for the sun, and I think this is too big, but I wanted to give myself an indication of exactly where it was going to go so I could focus on the highlights for each of the clouds. I also redrew in my horizon line where I wanted it to be to make sure that I had painted far enough down to cover any sky that would be between the clouds and the horizon, but also to help me judge how much space should be between those areas when I was drawing those clouds in. And I want to start with the clouds that are sitting behind other clouds. So like this one is going to sit behind this one here. There's one over here that's going to sit behind this one and then the one on the very right. So I'm going to do those first because I want to get the highlight on top of them and not worry about trying to paint the darker color as I move into the dark colors. So I'm going to do some of the clouds first all the way through, let them dry, and then do the clouds that sit in front of that afterwards.
Once I finished my clouds, I felt like there was too much white paint in the highlights in this area. It was just overwhelming and it was hard to kind of look at because there was so much white paint there. So I took some of my lightest yellow colors I had and painted it all the way towards where that highlight was and completely painted over some of the white paint in some of these areas just so there's only a little bit of silver lining here around where the sun is. But because that's all wet, I can't put down my piece of tape so I can start painting the water and get a nice crisp horizon line. So I'm going to block in some of the base colors for the water here so I know where things are and I don't lose my chalk lines later. And then once it's all dry, I can put my tape down and then just repaint over the water with all of the details and highlights I really want to have on top of what I had blocked in with the base colors. Using the same colors from the sky, I started to paint in the water to block it in. There was a few small changes, like I picked up some of my primary cyan and brought it in here on top of the violet, and it's very dark and everything is very saturated. It's Lisa Frank colorful, which is not the look I'm going for, even though I really do love Lisa Frank. So everything is blocked in kind of how I want it to be, at least location-wise. Once I had it blocked in and all of the clouds were finally dry, I could put my piece of tape down for my horizon line. This way, it's right on the horizon line and I've taped above where I want it to be, so I can paint underneath it and get a nice, crisp, sharp line for the horizon, instead of doing this wavy line I had done to block it in. Originally, I wanted it to be a fourth or half of an inch down from here, but some of my paint had gotten above that line, so I just moved it up a little bit, and I think the space between the clouds and the bottom of my horizon line right here where the ocean starts is a good space amount. Like, I thought it was too big once I was looking at it after I had this blocked in. Now, the green was an accident. I had used some of the primary cyan with glazing liquid to make it transparent, and I painted that here because you would see like some of the waves receding back, overlapping where the new waves are coming in and making wet sand on the beach here on the very edge. But because I used that on top of yellow and blue and yellow make green, it ended up pretty green here and I'm going to be repainting that later, but just for now it's how it's blocked in and where waves and such are going to go. The only thing I didn't really block in in this area was the foam from the wave crashing back onto itself. I didn't want to do that because I knew I would have to repaint what was under that foam and the mist from the water getting kicked up there, so I just left that alone for now. But now that everything was dry and everything was blocked in, I could tape off my horizon line and start to draw in Pina Park over here exactly where it's going to go and how big it's going to be. So I did that because I want to have a shadow cast from the island on the water right here where the sun would hit it and then it cast a shadow onto the water so it would be a lot darker over here. So I had to draw it so I could figure out exactly where it was going to be so I could do that shadow when I do the water. I'm not going to paint this in yet because the tape is in the way, so I just wanted to make sure I had that edge correctly, and I'll work on it later after everything else is done. Before I actually start on the water itself, I think I want to get the sand right so that when I'm working on the water, I have the sand all the way to where the wave starts, and I can bring the water on top of that sand just a little bit. I'm still figuring out how big I want the sun to be, and I keep making the sun smaller. Where I'm at right now, I think I want to make it even smaller than this, and have an even lighter color around the edge here just to make it glow a little bit more than it already is. The sand in-game is orange, but it's not this orange, so I need to tone it down and make it more earthy colors with burnt umber, burnt sienna, and yellow ochre. That way it'll look a lot more natural and a lot less Lisa Frank. 
I'm starting with a dark color right on the water's edge because the foam that gets pushed up with each wave is going to cast a shadow on the wet sand in front of it because the sun is all behind the foam. So it gets lit up from the back and then cast the shadow down onto the sand. I'm doing that for the part that's going to be under this little receding wave here as well because once I finally paint the water on top of that, it'll be earthy and it won't turn the water green. It'll look more blue on top of what I'm going to have there. So those are gonna be done as well and I'll be able to tell where that line is because each part where it recedes back here gets that dark line. So I'll see both edges of where the receding wave is and the incoming wave on top. Sometimes you do something in a painting and you really like it at the start of the piece, but once you finish up the rest of the painting and all of the pieces are there on the canvas, you don't like it as much at the end. And I'm hoping I don't feel that way about the sand, but I've done the sand texture like this in other paintings and not liked it at all at the end, so I had to repaint it. What I did was take a lot of these earth tones, yellow ochre, raw sienna, burnt sienna, and the raw and burnt umbers over here, and I started to mix different colors of sand, starting with a lot of the umbers for the shadows and the darker colors of the sand, and moving into the ochre and the burnt sienna for the top part where the highlights are. And then as I needed to, I could adjust with um, my primaries over here and titanium white. So you can see I made a little bit more orange colors in some areas and lighter colors when I needed to do the very, very highlight grains of sand on the dry beach part. Once I had done all the sand, I thought I had too much down here because I had dry sand and then the sand under a little bit of wave and then this one back here and I thought it was too much. So I painted over this one with titanium white, let it dry and then put some primary cyan on top because it's going to end up as water like the rest of the background here. So I hope the water turns out in the end because right now I really like it um, and I worked really hard on it and it was finicky to get just right but if I have to change it, I have to change it, and that's how it goes in painting sometimes. The next thing I wanna work on is the water, and originally I wanted this to be bright and colorful, a bit glassy in the background here because the waves are quite calm in sunshine, but I really like the idea of having this wave here like I did with my Pokemon Go painting. Um, so I wanted to have the wave a lot. I think that brings a good focus here with this triangular, composition to the rest of the piece. So I'm going to keep the wave, but I wanna make the ocean back here feel more natural. I was looking at different photographs of the beach at sunset. I watched some of Bob Ross's wave painting videos and his oceans are very dark when he does the sunset sunrise at the ocean. They have a lot of blue in them. The uh, white wave caps that are out here are the only places that get a lot of the bright sunset colors because the sun is reflecting off those areas and making them have these bright colors. So I think I wanna try that instead of this bright, glassy, colorful mess. So I'm going to put a lot of different blues on my palette here and then paint the background, stopping once I get to the crest of the wave because that's going to be a whole other thing that I have to work on after I do some other stuff in the piece. I started to fill in the ocean with Prussian blue hue and because it's very transparent, it made it look green and it was kind of like the green that happened down here when I was blocking in the water and I didn't like how it looked so I have to paint all of this white up here so it covers that yellow paint and then I can put down the Prussian blue hue on top of that and keep working on the ocean. 
In the meantime, I'm just gonna jump over here and paint the shadow of Peanut Park for the water over there using some more of the Prussian blue hue, but maybe mixing in some Doxine Violet, maybe some Bone Black just to make it a bit darker in that area that's going to get the shadow on the water. Refining these waves was a process. I had started with the Technicolor and then made it titanium white so I didn't get green, and then I had to paint blue over it, and I used a dark Prussian blue hue for the entire base of the ocean. Once that was dry, I could start to add in lighter and lighter blues to bring the waves, getting smaller lines and closer together the closer to the horizon I was getting. As I worked on that, I thought about where the sun is going to cast the brightest highlights onto the ocean, kind of in this V shape here, and I brought in lighter and lighter blues in that area, but didn't bring them into some of these areas out here, especially behind the island because it's going to cast a shadow across the island over here. It wouldn't get that bright highlight that the sun is casting here in the center. I also brought some of my sky colors, especially the yellow, orange, and red, into some of this area because you would get a little bit of that reflection there onto the water. Once I had the wave set with the shapes and the highlights, I tapped in a little bit of foam in some areas where you would get the crest of the wave doing the white cap, and I brought in a little bit of the foam that would travel up the curve of the wave as it was starting to crest over. Now that I was done with all of that, I can finally remove the tape and start on the big wave here. I've already blocked it in titanium white because I wanna make sure that the yellow for the inside of the crest right here is not green, it needs to be yellow instead. And it's going to get down into the deep Prussian blue like I have under this crest down here at the base of the wave. Once I finish all of the inside pieces, I can tap in the foam for the top and then work on the part that's folded over here. So I've been struggling trying to get the light blue into the warmer colors inside of the wave here. 
and I'm struggling with it because I can't go from blue to yellow. It'll just make green and I don't want to have green there on the painting. So what I think I'm going to do is paint this white, fade it into lighter blues, into the deep blue, into the base of the wave, the way it would be if it wasn't sunset. Once that's done and dry, I can start to add little hints of yellow in here where the blue isn't, because I'll know where the blue needs to be to make the right value to make the curve of the wave. I can also add more of my warm colors into this part where I get the little bit of highlight and then down into this area here, but I'll know where all the blue is so I can keep the yellow away from it so it doesn't turn green. On top of the wave here, that part's working pretty good, so I might just leave that alone. And over here, I'm gonna do the same thing where I start painting it white, fade it into the deep blues here, and then later adding just a little bit of yellow. I've been working on all of the small details for the wave. Things like adding some blue in to bring a hint of water on top of the sand, the foam on the edges here, and then bringing some of the color on this part because I'm still gonna get that reflection from the sky. I don't like how I have the gradient here where the water is thin enough and it's up in the sky enough that it's going to catch the lights from the sky. I was basing this mostly off of the Bob Ross Ocean Sunset painting, but I think I wanna reverse it to the way I had it before, where the pink color is closer to the blue and it fades to yellow where it's orange right now. So I'm going to take what I have and reverse it the other way. But I wanna paint it white first because putting yellow on top of this orange isn't going to work out as well. So I'm gonna do that while it's drying. I'll work on some more of the sand stuff down here and I still have to finish the sun before I ever get to Peanut Park.
Everything is done except Pina Park Island over here, and I have to do a little bit along the edge so it looks like it's actually sitting in the water and not floating above it. I still have obviously parts to do left in here, but I had drawn everything in with a liquid acrylic marker, so I could see where all of my lines were, I could make some changes and make sure everything was correct. Then I filled things in kind of like a checkerboard, making sure that I filled things in without like losing the lines I had done. So I didn't do the, like the part on the right here and the back because then I would lose the line that separates those. So I'm gonna fill in all of the places that are solid carbon black with the violets and the different colors they get for this arch part. Once it dries, I can fill in these blank areas that I've left over with the carbon black, let that dry and then finish those up. I did that with all of these pieces down here too, but because they were all rock, it was a little bit easier to fill them in when they were next to each other because they all have the same sort of texture and shape. So now that that part's done, I just gotta kind of focus on this violet part. One of the last things I have to do is the Ferris wheel in Peanut Park. And it's something I've been dreading because it's going to be very technical to make sure it looks right. Now I had to figure out exactly where the Ferris wheel was going to go, how big it was, and I had to count how many spokes were on it in the game so I could figure out where all of those points were going to go in the circle. Now it's not just a circle and it's not just these straight spokes that I've drawn so far, which is kind of why I've been dreading it. It has this starfish shape where each one of the legs has two pieces and they curve out to a point together. So this is all of my framework to do everything else. Each time one of these lines intersects the circle, that's where the point of each one of the starfish legs is going to go, and there's eight legs on the starfish Ferris wheel. Then I know exactly how far out they're going from the center and where each one of those should end up. So each one of the carriages for the Ferris wheel is going to be on those points as well. What I did is I took my compass and I started in the center of the arch and drew a dot out here about how big I wanted it to be and then I drew my circle all the way around with the compass. That gave me an idea of how big it was going to go. And because there's eight legs or carriages for the Ferris wheel, each one has to be 45 degrees different from the other. So I used the protractor to figure that out. Now that I have all of that framework in, I can start to do those starfish legs. I'm going to try and draw a couple and see which one I like best. Then I'm going to take its measurements, make myself a tracer on paper, and that way I just have to set the tracer right on the center point and line the outside to the outside spoke here, and then trace the outside so I have that line for each one of those starfish arms. I started to draw in the first arm up here on the canvas with chalk, and I thought about how much chalk I would be putting on the canvas, trying to make sure I had that shape right, and then I would have to redraw it on paper anyway, so I started to draw it in my sketchbook, and while I was redrawing my circle and the angles down here in the bottom right, it occurred to me that there's eight arms, it's an octopus, not a starfish. But once I was happy with one of those, I had drawn different forms of how it would look, how wide it was, where it started around the center base. I was happy with one of them, so I cut it out from down here. Then I had a tracer, and I started to trace it up here to see how it would look as an entire Ferris wheel on the canvas when it was done. Because they're not filled in solid, they get these lines and they get the negative space because it's just the outside lines that get filled in. 
I wasn't super happy with it after I had drawn two or three, so I refined the shape exactly how I wanted it to go, and I recut it out and I started to trace it all the way around, and it looks much better this time. Now that I have that and I have a tracer that I like, I can go back to my canvas and trace this here on the canvas. Normally, like I said, I use chalk because I can erase it most of the time, but it's a lot thicker of a line to draw in everything, especially trying to trace. It's a lot easier to use a mechanical pencil, but that's harder to erase on canvas. But I have a tracer, I'm not freehanding this, that I made so I can just use pencil and I'll be filling it in with paint because it's exactly what I need it to be. last thing I have to do is add some value to the octopus arms. Right now they're just a spaghetti mix of blue-violet and they need to have some value to give them definition and to complete the entire painting. The same way I had to do the roller coaster pieces, it'll bring it together just like that. So adding in a little bit of highlights on some of these areas and adding value to them to make sure you could see which ones were in front of other ones really helped the roller coaster. So I have to do the same thing for the octopus ferris wheel. Originally, when I had drawn it in, I had used a liquid black paint inside of a paint marker. So these are just empty markers you can buy. And I had filled it with the liquid carbon black. Now, I have an easier time with the liquid paints for Golden to get nice clean lines when I'm doing small details. And I knew I would have trouble trying to fill in the blue green. So I took some ultramarine blue and quinacridone magenta and just mixed these together with some titanium white until I was happy with the color that I got. And then once I had that, I had it mixed up in a little plate here, I could just paint it on top of the carbon black. But like I said, I need to add some value just to bring the whole thing together. And we're done! We have Sirena Beach from Super Mario Sunshine. If you're interested in this piece, you could buy a poster or a phone case, or bid on this original canvas. There's links down below. Also, consider supporting me on Patreon. You can find out more at supportmal.com. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss future episodes of Mal Makes, and I'll see you again here for another video game painting.